vested in me on behalf of this university, I can now confer you with the degree Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa. Congratulations, Tony Walsh. This lad got his cap and gown. <laughs> Chancellor, Deputy Lieutenant, graduates, guests, huge thank you for inviting me here today, for honouring me in this way. It means so much to me. Thank you. Um, <coughs> it's such a pleasure to be here with the School of Arts and Media, Arts and Media graduates. Am I in a room full of culture vultures? Would I be right? <laughs> I, I think so. I appreciate it. I know it's hard to be a culture vulture and a counterculture vulture culture, but if we counter the counterculture culture, we can culture more culture vultures. <laughs> All together now, it's hard to be. <laughs> um, as a poet, I'm going to uh, share a poem with you today, if I may, but just a few quick thank yous, uh, if, if I may. Um, thank you, usually to, to Beth. For, for that introduction. You honour me greatly there. Thank you. Um, I'm thinking of my mum today. Uh, my mum's not with us anymore. She was given uh, a fortnight to live and lasted 10 years. Remarkable woman, Elaine. I'm thinking of my mum today. I have a ring with me. I have a photo with me. Uh, I'm thinking also of my dad, who's here, Frank, who cared for my mum uh, courageously, tirelessly for many years. My dad was born in Ireland in County Cavern, in a house, brought up in a house with no gas, no electric, no water, no toilet, no heating. Kids, can you imagine? No internet. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Dad, for all your support. I'm so glad you could be here today. Um, my wife, Helen, is here. Thank you. Uh, my wife, my wife uh, Helen, is here today. We've been together since we were 19, and we, we met when I was at Salford. A uh, certain amount of romancing happened at Castle Irwell, if you were. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> So, Helen, th huge thanks for all your love and support over the years. I couldn't do it without you. My, uh, my son, Joseph, is here today. Um, my daughter, Katie, isn't uh, able to be here, but I love you guys, and I'm very proud of you. I'm thinking also of my uh, brothers and sisters, uh, Debbie, Tina, and Michael. My sister, uh, Tina, is here as well, and again, I'm, I'm very proud of them. Uh, my wife's, uh, we lost my wife's father, Stan, a few years ago. Stan was a coal miner. My wife's mum was, uh, is a, um, a school cleaner, Mary, from a mining family. I'm thinking of them today, and Uncle Roy, a miner, who, who very much helped us. In, in accepting this award, humbly, I, um, I pay tribute to those who, who have achieved a doctorate for real, a uh, massive achievement, and I congratulate you on that. I was particularly pleased to see the, um, the campaign a few weeks ago, hashtag um, uh, Immodest Women, uh, encouraging women academics to to own their qualifications and stand up and, and wear their doctorates uh, badge with pride. And um, it humbles me to, um, to uh, gain that honorary title today. Uh, I'd like to thank Rose and Dave and Clive in my, uh, who, who work with me behind the scenes. They know who they are and I hope they're watching. As has been said, uh, my thoughts today go back to the 22nd of May 2017. My thoughts are there today because they've been there every day since. Uh, I've met many of the families. I met two just yesterday. And um, I think this city can be very proud of the way we stood together with those people and their families and those who were injured and the warmth and the love and the generosity and the creativity and the defiance of this city, this city region's uh, response to that. And if my contribution played a, a tiny part in that, and if today is, is in part in reflection of that, then that's overwhelming for me, uh, humbling for me, and uh, I thank you. But I do think our city can be very proud of its response. Can we have a, can we have a cheer for, in solidarity with those people? And in, and in...
in solidarity with those people, with their families, uh, and in recognition and thanks for this city's uh, amazing response. And what I delivered that day was a poem. We're here to honour arts and media grad graduates. The event that was bombed was a musical celebration. Whoops. What we uh, honoured was uh, the event that was bombed was a, a musical uh, event. I'd like to deliver you a poem, if I may, called Arts and Minds, that is my battle hymn for the arts and culture scene in this country. I wrote it a few years ago when the cuts first started happening. I saw a tweet that um, the arts needs to speak with one voice, the arts needs to speak with a louder voice in, in the face of, of cuts and closures and the things that I see in my work going to school, school libraries closing, music services winding down, uh, public libraries closing, the loss of student grants and so on. So I, uh, I deliver this and my message to the graduates today is what you've studied, what you have, is an amazing thing. Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. And if we want to change the world, it needs to be imagination and creativity that, that will do that. And as we're hearing, um, the arts are an amazingly powerful tool for engaging people and, um, as I say, helping to change the world, bringing people together. So this is uh, all from me. I wish you all the very best. You know, Manchester, we're in Salford here, but Manchester was a Roman city, and the Romans... Uh, urged us all to leave the city better and more beautiful than we found it. And as arts graduates, you, you have, have every chance to do that. And I wish you all the very best. And I'll leave you with this poem called Arts and Minds. And may I say it's a particular honour for me today to receive my award from such a distinguished poet as, as Jackie. Thank you. So the arts are a low priority. But it's the principal thing that defines us as human. Those moments, exponents can light up the room and it soundtracks our lives. It's the heart of our nation, bringing civilization to our civilization. It's the cultural pulse of these green, pleasant lands. It's the heartbeat you can't beat from Britain's best bands. It's the sounds that just pounds all around Britain's streets as our geeks and our freaks tweak this week's beeps and bleats. It's the tourists who flock to our national collections. It's tears in your eyes as you witness perfection from prime time and mainstream, for family sharing, to courageous, outrageous and out there and daring, from relaxing, not taxing and safe and commercial, to incendiary, extraordinary, brave, controversial. It's mashing up cultures and mixing up styles. It's dancing at dawn to a night on the tiles. It's opera and soap opera, ballet and pantos, dubstep concertos and thrash metal cantos. It's guitars and sitars and harps and harmonicas, gay disco, bebop, a psych funk, a tronica. It's every subgenre of music conceivable. Oh, you missed it last night, man. It was unbelievable. It's skate punk and space funk and reggae got soul. It's bass pounding, a sounding, great rock and roll. It's hip hop and punk rock and bitter street symphonies. And infamy, infamy. They've all got it infamy. It's box office blockbusters. The talk of the town. It's the smell of the popcorn. The lights going down. It's how movies can move us and never forget. How dance moves, enhance moods, make souls pirouette. It's the special effects of those special effects. It's comedy, tragedy, drama and sex. It's bright lights and highlights. It's Saturday nights. It surrounds and confounds and astounds and delights. It's the miracle of magical musical spectaculars. Hip hop is written in modern vernacular. It's gazing, amazing, not seen that before. It's gobsmacked and goosebumps and gaping in awe. It's PG, it's 12, it's 15, 18. It rolls from our consoles and screams from our screens. It blazes from pages and pulses palladiums, rages from stages and staggers our stadiums. It's the roar of the grease paint, the smell of the crowd. It's the deafening silence, then crying out loud. It's the antici patient, the exhilaration, the edge of your seat, then a standing ovation. It's the light that it shines on the human condition. It's the priceless delights for the price of admission. It's genius between us in arenas and fields. It's prima ballerinas and the way that it feels when the act of an actor on stage in a play charts that part of your heart that you never display. It's Sugar Babe Shakespeare, it's Lock Up Your Chaucers, it's Dickens, Rich Pickings for Sought After Authors, it's Burlesque and Batik and Beatbox and Bangra and Mosaic and Mimicry, Montage and Manga, it's Graphic Design and the Finest Typography, Visceral, Mystical, Phenomenal Photography, it's how photos expose those who pose to the eyes. 
how the lens tends to cleanse and extends a surprise. It's political puppetry, feminist fiction, knitters with attitude, graphic depictions of horror and fantasy, sci-fi and splattercore, people who tell you that nothing can matter more than the hope and the glory last night of the proms, the choirs of fire, the poems like bombs, the rocking with laughter and packed to the rafters, the Oscars, the Costas, the Mobos and Baftas, the fire-breathing, fire-twirling, firework and flames at the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. And we sing Cool Britannia because Britain is blessed. We're first class. We're world class. It's what we do best. When it comes to the arts, we are such a world leader. Small islands, big talents. We're overachievers. Creative industries, culture where business is booming. But cracks are appearing. And cutbacks are looming. So Britain's got talent of incredible breadth, bringing pleasure beyond measure to incredible depth. So remember that arts, yes, can generate millions, but enjoyment, employment can generate billions. And it's not just the artists. There's work for technicians, for brickies and chippies, for skilled electricians, designers, suppliers, and jobs which are key, whether making decisions or making the tea. It all creates income. It generates wealth, which is spent and respent more than pays for itself. So art, just for art's sake, can take pride of place. But there's no business like a show business, business case. But it's not all just glamorous, famous and glamorous stars. It's the art that takes place in the schools and the bars, in the old people's homes, in community centres. It's tutors and teachers and workshops and mentors. And it's not just for capital, cultural elites. It's for ordinary people from ordinary streets. It's the whole filling, soul thrilling joy that it brings when ordinary people do extraordinary things. So let's celebrate art in our local communities, wide ranging, life changing, brick opportunities, breeding cohesion and tackling sorrow. Beginners begin to be winners tomorrow. It widens horizons. It broadens our mind. It binds us together. It helps us unwind. It deals in diversity, eases anxiety, weaves ties that bind through the fabric of society. It's the honesty, dignity, beauty and truth of chronic art writers who write of their youth. And I've heard, heard say their wordplay when given a start is a javelin traveling straight to the heart. So the arts is a therapy fighting ill health. It's the used and confused boy who's finding himself. It's that look in his eye for the very first time when a light switch is on in the back of his mind. An artist can spark this in kids of all ages, help the shyest fly highest to triumph on stages, tell the shy kids to fly kids and soar to new heights. You've exponential potential, so reset your sights. Start growing, start showing you the best you can be. No ceilings, those feelings when your soul is set free. It's ducklings to swans. It's wallflowers flowering. It's a voice for the voiceless. It's enabling, empowering. It's bewitching, enriching. It can save people's lives. Help the lonely not only to grow but to thrive. It's rough lad with tough dads who just want to dance and they'd give it their all if we give them a chance and when nobody listens the quiet girl sings and that weight on her shoulders turns out to be wings and we're never more human than when we create. Imagination, innovation is what makes us great. As Britons, as humans, it sets us apart. And so let's tell our heads what we know in our art. So let's fight for the arts and for what's being lost. And let's talk about value and not about costs. Because in every report, via every assessment, this isn't subsidy. This is investment, and it's time that the art stood together to shout this. Witness the richness. We're poorer without this. The value is priceless. That's all that we're saying. And some things that cost come at prices worth paying. And when they tell us that's fine, but where else should have cuts? Let's reclaim the debate with no ifs and no buts, because it's not about arts versus pensions or healthcare. It's not about arts versus schooling or welfare. But it is about choices. It's this simple choice. It is silence and lies versus truth given voice. So the question is not how to slice up austerity. The question is who has denied us prosperity. So don't fight over crumbs because there's too much at stake. Let's unite and let's fight those who've stolen the cake. Congratulations. Go forth and make great art. Change the world. A huge thank you to Salford University. Thank you. Thank you.